version. You don't really need to, you don't really need to maximize burn at all. Or minimize for that matter. And yes, clone, clone, uh, free upstream, they did, they did remove the minimize and the maximize button from the default clone shell. And yes, a lot of people... I think it's a very antiquated way of working in general. I mean, speaking for myself, I thought about why would people want to minimize a window? And I just realized that looking at other people's usage of, uh, I mean, okay, so there is, do you remember Windows 3.1? And, and uh, sort here, of uh, just what I've... happened in the minimize? I suppose you were quite young then. Uh, the, the way it would work is you'd have minimized applications and you'd have maximized ones. Uh, actually, back then you didn't have any notion of workspaces. The funny thing is, even after all those years, unless you pull some hacks and plugs and all kinds of stuff, uh, you still don't have workspaces or multiple workspaces in Windows and by default. So the way it would work is if you want to have multiple applications, you have to bring things up and down and work into the one workspace, almost as though you take a Linux desktop and somebody tells you, oh, you know, you've got all this desktop, you know, say goodbye to them, you're going to have to work on one desktop. And you're like, what? How am I supposed to manage all those windows? People say, oh, well, you take the windows that you're using, you minimize all of them, and then bring up the ones you want to use then, and then you have to bring them down and set them up again. Now, of course, the better things to do is to give you more space, and you kind of space them out around the screen. Now, the way the, the way of trying to tell people that don't use to, they don't need to minimize uh, windows is basically saying, well, you don't need to have any windows in a mode where they are hidden, uh, in the sense that they are inside, people think of themselves as being kind of hidden inside the taskbar or something. In the I think, yeah, the thing that's the metaphor. But the metaphor that's better is you've got all this application open, but they're open in different parts of the areas and different areas of the screen. You just have to move your screen to kind of zoom into different parts of your desktop based on what you're doing. Uh, in KDE4 now, they go a step forward and they talk about things like activities try and associate workspaces not with a place of work and oh, actually put something that, on activity yeah. you're doing. Uh, I think I think they've got activities in GNOME Shell now or something like that as well. Uh, I, was, I think it's, yeah. Um, I think what I was saying, so minimize, maximize, you, uh, I, don't, I don't really need it. I mean, and you can, I found out later, whenever it was, that you could just double click on the title bar to maximize anyway if you really want to. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, people complain about that, but it's one of those things that, you know, you get, you get used to it from Windows. It, it's like the, when it got moved to the left, obviously a lot of the Ubuntu users. I mean, most of them have come from Windows, I assume, so they were, they weren't totally not used to it being on the left, so there was all the complaining about that. And then the order as well. And, and it's just, and my, and I, I, wobbly Windows, even that, I like, you know, Compass. I, I, I cut the effects on sometimes and use the wobbly windows and the cube, but I can't, I don't really get very far with that. And, cause even if I go in the advanced Compass settings manager, I don't really get very far with the Compass settings manager. Um, yeah. but I, I had it on Mandriva with my, uh, for a while with, and my little brother was using it and he had the effects and he eventually said to me like, but you either I want I don't I just want to minimize and maximize like normal kind of thing. It was something like that. He basically he basically said to me like remove this effect or I'm just going to go and use Windows because Windows is on there as well. So so I should remove the effect. But it just shows how. But just people can get used to the way they do stuff. And then what I've always found a bit annoying with him is how he he I mean he he got to use Ubuntu when he was like four or five and. And he then move off to Mandriva and you know, it'll be Medea next time, I think. A very but young uh, Linux geek for it. He's not he's Linux. not really he's not really into computers, but he yeah. um at least I've given him the choice to use Linux and Windows, which I think is a good thing. And he um he's, he's probably gonna listen to this actually. Because <laughs> he won't he wanna listen to me on this. Yeah. Uh, uh anyway, um and yeah, and then he would always shut down the power button. I used to, I used to really <laughs> like my system menu in GNOME. Yeah, he's probably kind of uh, facepalming you know, and head desking. So I used like, to like my like system, <laughs> the old icons in GNOME, right? Before they changed it in like GNOME 3.0, but the yeah. Ubuntu 10.4 uses that version of GNOME, but they got the old icons. But I used to like the like really old shutdown icon and log out, and, and I think the new shutdown icon is doing. I care about the little things, you see. As well, the defaults and the little things as well, like the icon stuff. And 
But I used to have him on GNOME for a while, thinking like, oh, I'll just keep on GNOME. And I like GNOME, I use it mainly. But then I realised, look, you, see, you keep pressing the power button off on the computer because you can do that and you just get the shutdown stuff. It's not Windows where if you press the power button on the computer and you turn the computer back on, it'll be like, hey, you didn't shut me down properly. Do you want to run scan disk? Uh, well, scan mm. disk. Mm, want to check no. your disk? With Linux, you can just turn it off however you it's want, it's basically. <coughs> Actually, <coughs> sorry. Um, in the way it works in uh, all the distros that I, I'm aware of, only if you shut down in a very unexpected fashion, it's supposed to run a file system check. Uh, yeah, yeah, you might get the file system uh, check sometimes. And, and occasionally, it. if you haven't been rebooting in a long time, it has also a mechanism for saying, you know, we haven't rebooted in longer than, say, no, six months or something like that. And so if, if you're like, I mean, I've, I've run my current session on the desktop now for, I think, 33 days or something, no, no reboot, so... Next time I have to reboot, it's quite possible that it will force me to go into a file system check. Or yeah, yeah, you, you get the file system check, but I think that's automatic. So, I mean, in Ubuntu, you, I remember it being sort of like every 28 boots or something, and then the file system yeah. check. I had it in Mandriva earlier when I was booting up. I was I was looking at the nice Plymouth theme for the Mandriva 2010 series, and I was thinking, uh, I don't normally notice it or whatever, but I think this is this is looking a bit... This is a bit slow. Why is it slow? So I press X for the raw boost mode, the text mode. I really love how, yeah. I really like how distribution where you can switch between the Plymouth yeah. theme and the text mode. And you can do that in Mandriva, Magia, and PC Linux. Yeah. Well, that's, that's existed for a very long time. Yeah, Even but the more. Ubuntu, they don't, you can't just do it with Ubuntu, for example. It's, they just, you get the graphical yeah. boot and that's it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I think you can press escape in some of the old distribution. The old yeah, the old, older ones, but not the newer ones. It's like a ah. 9.4 when I put on... They had, yeah, you could do this, like, text boot all the time. It's on. really essential. You should be able to do that to... Uh, With see 9.4, I, when I put X4 on and... Or whatever, or whatever changed. Some, some, I did some sort of change and then I got the text boot. I think it was because I went to X4, which was, like, the optional file system at the time. It wasn't yeah. quite... Um, Stable enough, or they would say that. But yeah, it's good to have a text boot. You can really see what the computer is doing. And yeah, all have the nice graphics. Yeah, to see until you can get to one level that allows you to uh, get full resolution X, uh, X session. But um, yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those things that <coughs> uh, people sometimes complain about <coughs> that it's too visible. Even when you boot the computer, it gives you like all this jargon sometimes, like the different distros, the different modes you can boot into. Uh, and then some people want the text and the explanations, or maybe they want a fancy version of the of the text menu in very old SUSE, SUSE 8.1, would display to you the text of the booting sequence, but they will display to you in a very nice graphical way, so it will have like nicer fonts and everything. So you always have to struggle between people who want to know what's going around the computer, and people who just want to hide all of the complexity. The same thing happens on the desktop, of course, because uh, some people want to know the swap usage, the memory, yeah. they want to see all the tasks that they run and potentially kill them. And Windows tends to hide many of those things in a very counterproductive way. Yeah, 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 it's true. Windows hide, well, because you can say Linux does during standards. Well, it depends on the distribution. I mean, you, there's obviously these commands, but, but um, like, um, and actually, another advantage of these distributions, so Mandriva, Magia, PC Linux, and actually, I think Unity Linux has it as well, is obviously the control center. The control center is a bit different in Mandira and PC Linux OS from the one in Mandriva. For example, there aren't really, uh, parental controls in there, in there for some reason. But, um, but they're nearly the same thing. You can, in a nice graphical thing for configuring the system, and, for user accounts to stuff with the hardware to loads of stuff really yeah and you probably use it yourself in Mandriva so you probably know what I'm on about but is this available in uh, Magia? yeah yeah okay but the control PC, sent see PC Linux OS just remove the trademarks and everything this is very nice stuff even for automated backups and things PC I Linux OS they've I think what they've basically done is, they, the installer is nearly the same as Mandriva they, they've yep. tucked they've tucked I think what they've done is they've tucked certain tools from Mandriva and used them and sometimes from other distributions as well for example I think I remember if I remember, yeah there was it's like you get the Ubuntu sound scheme in the PC Linux repos if I remember correctly it was like what Oh, is that in there? And <laughs> yeah, um, use Synaptic too, or they used to be using Synaptic. And then, uh, then one time when I did upgrades in PC Linux OS, 
It, well, it, well, it, I was looking at what was going to explode. Well, it's like Sega Dreamcast hardware. And I was like, what? Firmware? And I was like, what? This is a desktop. Why do you want to install that? This is a normal PC. Why do you want to install? <laughs> and then I had this issue with Dog, and for some reason, we didn't just play. And even after.